Well, hey, hey there, everybody. It's your boy, Mr. Perry, and here we are at Unit Six, Lesson Two. In this unit, we're going to in this lesson, we're going to be learning how to traverse an array. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to just review some array basics here. Uh, by now, you know how to declare and instantiate an array of various data types. So, for instance, over here we have an array of integers called nums, and we're using an initializer list to uh, instantiate it with these values. We also learned that we can use the index to access and to update elements of an array. So uh, here we've got an integer a variable called a set to two, and as you can see, we're doing some uh, some print statements uh, using a uh, to access the element um, or to access the index. So go ahead and look at this algorithm here and predict what will happen when the code uh, executes, what will print when the code executes. Go ahead and just take a minute, look it over, uh, grab a sheet of paper, write down your prediction, and then when you're ready, um, uh, move forward in the video and see if you got it right. Okay, I'm going to assume that you paused the video and made your prediction. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the answer. So what it's gonna print would be 79747, but the question is why, right? And how do you read through this code uh, in order to understand this. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go through it. Let's run through this just like Java would, top to bottom, line by line, and let's uh, understand what this code is doing. So this first line of code is declaring and initializing an array called nums, and it has these values. Next, we're uh, creating a new variable uh, called a, and we're setting it equal to two. So here's our a, and again, the current value of a is two. Now we get to this line right here, which is a print statement. And it says print nums at index a. Well, a right now is two, so you can think of this as nums at index two, which means we go up to here and we remember that we start counting at zero. Zero, one, two, boom, there you go. That's our first seven that's printing. Now we get to this line of code over here, a plus plus says go ahead and take our uh, a variable and increment it up to three. Now we get our next print statement. So it says now print nums at A. Well, this time A is three, right? So now we're printing nums at position three or at index three. So we go zero, one, two, three, that's this number nine. So we're printing it. Next, we're gonna print again, but now it says nums at A plus one. Well, if the current value of A is three, A plus one is gonna take you up to four. So now we're printing nums at position four or at index four, which is this number seven right here. Now it says print nums at a minus two. Again, a is over here, a is three. So if you subtract two from that, that's gonna take you to nums at one. So again, zero, one, here's your number four. So it's now printing uh, number four because that's at index one. Final, or next, we're going to uh, reassign a to be nums.length minus one. Now the length of nums is five. So five minus one is just gonna be four. So now a is gonna be four. And again, nums, we're gonna be printing nums at a or nums at four. So we're gonna be printing this uh, seven up here again. Hopefully this made sense. Hopefully this was easy and doable for you. If not, you definitely need to go back and uh, rewatch uh, lesson one from unit six. Uh, and review those array basics. But uh, we're gonna assume that we're good, so let's go ahead and move forward. In this lesson, we are gonna learn what it means to traverse an array. So think about um, some of the challenges, some of the things that you might need to do with an array. Let's say you had an array and you needed to print each element of that array. Or what if you had an array of integers or doubles and you needed to either add or subtract or even multiply or divide the values from each element of an array. Or let's say you had a, an array of strings and you wanted to check whether or not a word appeared in that array of strings. For each of these questions, you would need to do what's called traversing the array. So um, to traverse an array, uh, just by definition, is using a loop, usually a for loop, to visit each element of an array and to perform an operation like printing or some kind of math or something else. So again, how can we use a for loop to go through an array of quiz scores and make sure that we're doing something here, 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 and here? Well, it turns out it's very, very similar to uh, what we learned earlier in the class about strings. It's very similar to traversing a string. 
So uh, here we have um, a, a string called class, and it's set to uh, APCSP. Um, and then we've got a for loop, for int i equals zero, as long as i is less than class.length i plus plus. And then inside the for loop, we have a print statement, and we are printing class.substring from i to i plus one. So again, pause the video, and do you know off the top of your head, or can you guess what this line of code will do? So take a second, write it down, figure out what your guess is, and then move forward in the video. I'm going to assume that you uh, made your guess, so let's go ahead and uh, move forward. Uh, now, I did make a mistake on the previous slide. It should have said string class equals APCSA, so I, I changed it on this one. I apologize. Uh, let's just assume it said CSA the entire time. Um, so this is what it would actually print. It would print AP and then a blank and then CSA. If you wrote down AP blank CSP, obviously you were correct. But how does this work? How is it doing what it's doing? So let's just break this down really quick. Um, we have a for loop for int i equals zero. Um, and again, as long as i is less than class.length, i plus plus. And we're printing the substring from i to i plus one. So when i is 0, we're printing the substring from 0 to 1, which, again, is just this first letter right here. So we print the a. i then goes up to, to 1, and then we print the substring from 1 to 2, which is just your letter p right here. Uh, i goes up to 3, and now we're printing the substring from 3 to, uh, to uh, no, I, i goes up to 2, and now we're printing the substring from 2 to 3 which in this case is your space, because again, um, you know, the characters of the string are indexed at 0, 1, 2, and then 3, 4, 5. So the space is technically index 2, which is what's printing here. Uh, I then goes up to 3, then goes up to 4, then goes up to 5, and when it gets to 6, it's no longer um, less than the length, and so it uh, stops from there. So that's how you loop through a string. Again, hopefully this is familiar. Hopefully this is something that you've, uh, you remember from uh, earlier in the class. So now let's go ahead and look at how we traverse an array. Um, so here's something very similar. Um, I've got an array of integers called nooms and it stores all of these values. As you can see, I have a, another for loop. It looks very similar to what we just saw with a couple of minor modifications. And then here's our print statement. So again, do you know off the top of your head or can you guess what this line of code will do? Take a minute, write it down, um, or just think about what your prediction is. I assume you paused the video. I assume you made your prediction. So let's look at the answer. Uh, this is your standard for loop that will iterate through a, um, an array from beginning to end and print each one of the values. So this would print 246810. The reason why is uh, because of this for loop. So let's go ahead and break down the syntax of the basic syntax to traverse an array. If you're gonna traverse an array from beginning to end, this is how you do it. Um, you start with an array, all right? Of course, you have to have an array in order to traverse an array. And it's important to take note of what is the name of that array. In this case, the name is nooms. Now you wanna have your standard for loop header. So you say for int i equals zero, as long as i is less than nooms.length, i plus plus. But what's important here is uh, what you're, uh, when you say as long as i is less than, you wanna make sure that you have the name of the array, um, which in this case is nooms, and then you just do dot length. Remember that for arrays, length is a public instance variable. It is not a method that's being called. So unlike a string where you would have, um, you know, the name of the string dot length and then your parentheses, because in that case you're calling a method, now you're just accessing a public instance variable. So you just do the uh, name of the array dot length. That's one key thing to remember, which is, you know, different about arrays. And then from there, you just get your print statement, but instead of having to do a substring, you just do the array name, and then in your square brackets, you have i. Whatever your loop control variable is, that's what goes inside your square brackets. So when this uh, goes through, um, it starts with i at 0, and it prints nooms at i, which is your 2. i goes up to 1, and then it prints nooms at 1. So again, index 1 is your number 4. i goes up to 2, and it prints nooms at 2, which is the number 6. i goes up to 3. Uh, which, um, again, is uh, this, it, it prints nooms at three, which is the number eight. And then finally, i goes up to four, 
up and it prints nooms at four, which is this number 10. And then when i goes up to five, it is no longer less than uh, the length of nooms. So then this for loop halts and it uh, sees if there's more code below it. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you see the connection that you can make uh, between how to traverse a string versus how to traverse an array. In my opinion, it's easier to traverse an array. I think the syntax is a little bit more simplified, especially since you don't have to call that, you know, substring method down here. All right, so let's look at some other ways to traverse an array. So um, here's another array called nooms, or here's the same array called nooms, but this time your for loop is different. So once again, read through the for loop, try to understand what it's doing, uh, make a prediction, um, what you think is going to print, and then when you're ready, move forward in the video. Okay, I'm going to assume that you made your prediction, so let's go ahead and look at uh, what's happening here. Um, hopefully, uh, you noticed that uh, this is going to traverse the array in reverse order. This is going to print 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2. Now, the reason is um, checking out your for loop. Uh, it says 4 int i equals nooms.length minus 1. Okay, so we're starting at nooms.length minus 1. So remember, nooms.length is just an integer. It's, you know, the length of this array, which of course is 5. 5 minus 1 means 4. So really, you can read this uh, for loop as 4 int i equals 4. And as long as i is less than or equal to 0, i minus minus, and then print nooms at i. So the first thing that we do is we print uh, i, I'm sorry, nooms at position 4, then position 3, 2, 1, and 0. And then when it gets to negative 1, it's no longer greater than or equal to 0, so the for loop halts. So that's how this one works. Um, now, uh, you have to be very careful with index values and with your for loop header when you are traversing in reverse order. It's very important to take note of this. Um, your starting point, when you're, when you're traversing in reverse order, you always have to start at the name of the array dot length minus one. Um, and this is to avoid an array index out of bounds error. If you did um, for int i equals nooms dot length, then you would be trying to access for the very first iteration index five, which is outside the range of the array. Remember your index values are zero, one, two, three, four. So there is no index five. Um, so that's important is just remember that you always do a uh, length minus one. The other thing that's really important is to make sure that your uh, ending condition is as long as i is greater than or equal to zero. If you just did as long as i is greater than zero, um, it would do index four, three, two, and one, and then it would leave off this very first element. So it's very important that you say as long as i is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, and so that way you're including index zero. All right, let's look at um, some other ways of traversing an array. Let's go ahead and modify this for loop header um, yet again and see uh, what we think is going to print this time. So again, pause the video here, look at your uh, for loop header and make a prediction about what you think is going to print. I assume you went ahead and made your prediction, so let's go ahead and look at the answer. So this time we're only going to print two and four. And that's because we're starting the for loop um, with i equal to zero. So the first one that we're going to print is two. Um, but it says, uh, you know, keep moving forward as long as i is less than nooms.length divided by two. So um, nooms.length is five. And uh, remember that, uh, you know, this is an integer. And if we're dividing an integer by another integer, you know, five divided by two is 2.5, but it's just going to um, become two due to, you know, truncating the, uh, the decimal point. So, um, you know, basically you can read this as four and i equals zero, as long as i is less than two, i plus plus. That's, you know, you can kind of simplify it by, by thinking about it that way. So that means we're only going to print index zero and then index one. We don't print index two because this says as long as i is less than nooms.length divided by two, which is again just the number two. So um, as soon as the index becomes two or as soon, as soon as i goes up to two, it is no longer less than two. So the for loop would halt. All right. So just some common mistakes to think about um, and to be cautious of uh, when you're moving forward with this uh, lesson. 
when you're traversing an array from beginning to end, be sure to use as long as i is less than the length of the array instead of as long as i is less than or equal to the uh, length of the array. Because if you used, you know, as long as i is less than or equal to, this would cause an array uh, index out of bounds error. You know, it's just going to be as long as i is less than the length of the array. So that's one common mistake as somebody might do as long as i is less than or equal to nooms.length. That would cause an error. Um, and when you're traversing an array in reverse order, be sure to start with the loop at length minus one instead of the length of the array, because once again, this would cause an array index out of bounds error. So you can see right here, this person is trying to iterate uh, or to traverse the array in reverse order, but they started it at um, for int i equals nooms dot length, which means you're trying to start it over here. So that would cause uh, an error. And then again, another uh, a logic error that would happen is when you're traversing an, an array in reverse order, be sure to use as long as i is greater than or equal to zero instead of um, as long as i is greater than zero uh, as the end condition. Because again, you don't wanna leave out index zero in that loop. So you would wanna make sure you did as long as i is less than or, or greater than or equal to zero. All right, and then just a couple of other quick things to look at. Um, arrays can also be passed into a, a function as a parameter. Um, just like a string can be um, passed into an, a, uh, a method as a, a parameter. Arrays are no different. You can also um, uh, write a method. So here we have public void multiply all. And this is going to be taking in as parameters an array of integers, which is called nooms. And then it's also taking in an integer called factor. And what this does is this um, uh, loops through the entire array called nooms. So whatever array gets passed in here, we're gonna loop through the entire thing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say for every value of i, um, we're gonna say nooms at i is now gonna be equal to nooms at i multiplied by this factor. And that's going to do that for each uh, element of the array. It's basically going to reassign um, each element of that array to be its current value multiplied by a number. So we can look at that down here. If if uh, if this was my um, if this was my method up here, and then let's say below that in the same class file I had my main method, um, I could create an array of integers called numbers and give them all of these values. Then on the next line, I'm calling the method multiply all, and I'm passing in numbers and the factor of two as my parameters. So this array numbers gets passed in as my integer array, and then the number two is gonna be passed in as my factor. What that's gonna do is it's gonna loop through my array of numbers, and it's gonna say every single number is now going to be, um, or every single index value is now going to be the current uh, value multiplied by two. So this would go through and, and this would now be, um, you know, instead of seven, it would be 14. And instead of four, it's gonna be eight. Um, it would multiply all of these values uh, by two. And then down here, um, after I call the method, I now have a for loop that's going through and printing each of the values. And again, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see um, 14, eight, four, 14, 16, because we've multiplied them all right here. So that's how you would pass in a, um, an array as a parameter. Um, and then another common thing that we're gonna end up doing with arrays, um, especially arrays of strings, is we're gonna search for elements. So here's a similar type method. Um, we have a, a, a public static um, method and it's gonna be returning an integer um, and it says find string. And this is an, expecting an array of strings called uh, ARR. And then it's also um, going to be getting a, a string called target. Now what this does is, um, it, it, uh, well, we're gonna actually break this down on, on the next slide. Let's actually go ahead and start doing this. Let's, let's go ahead and break this down. So the first thing that this is gonna do is pass in an array of strings and a target word to find. So that's what's happening here and here. Next, um, we're gonna create a new variable called uh, word. And um, this creates a variable called word so that we can call the, um, uh, the dot equals method down here 
uh, for each uh, element of our array. This is an, an important part of this uh, algorithm right here. We, we need to be able to call word.equals, and so that means we need to have a, a word variable in order to make that happen. But now what we're doing is we're looping through um, each element of our array called ARR, so for int index equals zero, as long as index is less than um, arr.length, and then index plus plus. So we're looping through the array from beginning to end. But now what we're doing is we're taking this um, word variable, and for, for each index of this array, we're saying word is equal to array at index. So this is going to take the first string out of that array and store it as the variable word, and now we're checking if word dot equals target. So we're basically saying, does this variable, does this string equal the target that we are looking for? And if it does, then we're going to return the index um, of that uh, of that element. So um, if if it does match, let's say it's at that very first position. Let's say it's at index zero. Um, it would return zero. If it was in the third position, then it would return uh, index two, and so on and so forth. So this checks whether the word variable matches the target word you're searching for, and it returns the index if it's found. But what if the target word doesn't appear in our um, array of strings? Then what's gonna happen is once we've looped through the entire array, if we haven't found the index where it's at, then we're gonna return negative one. If you loop through the entire array and don't find the target, then the method returns negative one, indicating that the target was not found. So um, this kind of gives you an idea of, you know, um, the power of, of for loops and, uh, you know, traversing an array and all of the different things that you can do with it. So at this point, you guys are ready to start your work. Um, and again, you can do CS Awesome um, Unit 6 Lesson 2 or there will be uh, an, a new um, array activities document uh, for alternate array practice. Um, and part of the, uh, that practice is actually linked at this slideshow. Uh, you do have some AP Daily videos that you can uh, watch for review, uh, but there's a website called Practice It, where um, as long as you sign up using your school email, uh, and then you can do the following problems. Um, and again, those are linked here for you. So as long as you're logged in, as long as you sign up and log in, you can do these and then uh, check how well you do. Uh, there's also Coding Bat Array uh, Section 2. These are the more difficult problems. These are the ones where you actually have to loop through the array. So uh, you've got some options here. Uh, go ahead and get started, guys, and I will see you in class.